Komal went to US in 2022 on H1B visa along with her daughter. Her husband was already in US on L1B. This video is a real interview experience of how all of this happened for Komal. She is sharing a detailed account of her visa journey, how to overcome tricky questions in the visa interview, and some amazing tips for managing the work culture and life in US. Keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos on the US visa process. So make sure to check it out. We have a playlist for H1B visa. We also have some free downloads, a document checklist and a question bank. So the links for all of this is in the description box below. Do take a look. If you're appearing or even planning to appear for a H1B visa, then this video is a must watch. Make sure that you have your pen and notebook ready. And there are a lot of useful tips coming your way. So stay tuned and let's get started. Yeah, hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Happy. Yes, it's good to see you back. So good to see you. I still remember our mock sessions and everything about it. It's been a year now, is it? Almost. Yes, almost. I mean, uh, we had done this in March and I came here in May. Uh, just wanted like an overview of your interview, like what happened, like, you know, so that somebody... That, okay, I went, this was a document asked. My interview was at Delhi and then it was just two days before I got an appointment. And within two days of time, I uh, I knew obviously from my husband and also social media platform what you and I com uh, contacted you. And within two, those two days, you also um, adjusted your accommodated me into your schedule. And then we had two to three mock interviews. And then the flight is booked. You have to travel to Delhi. The first process is, I think, the stamping fingerprints and those things. And first day, the second day is your interview. So when I went for fingerprint, I remember it was in Delhi, it was underground. The office is underground, the fingerprint office. And uh, I, I don't remember the names of these offices, frankly. <laughs> but uh, it was underground and there was a long queue. And they have your time slots you go to uh, at that particular. Let's say if it is 8 o'clock, you be there by 8.30 minimum. And they have two, four queues from 8 to uh, 9. So they just arrange your people in the queues. And then you enter the office. They, it's just... Uh, five to ten minutes when you enter inside but before that uh, at the window they verify your ds-160 form they are very precise about verifying those ds-160 form all the name surname passport details dates expiry dates everything should be correct if that is not correct they ask you to uh, go to the nearest uh, cafe and then then correct it and then come back again and that too they uh, have very uh, limited time let's say 12 o'clock or one o'clock and they go for lunch and i think post that they don't do not even have the appointment so that you have to go and come back uh, quickly uh, if there is a correction so make sure that your ds 150 form is filled very is being verified properly uh, basically your immigration from your company helps you to verify everything but from your side also do one more check with spelling dates uh, your uh, even your husband's name mother's name whatever is there your passport details you verify those names properly and the dates and then once you enter I think the fingerprint was done and you're immediately out of the kit. Then you go back and come on, uh, on a second day. You go to an embassy. Did you travel with your daughter for all this? No. no. She was my dependent, but uh, I think before five years, it is not mandatory to carry your kids along with you. You can just keep a backup of their photocopy. So I offered her the photocopy. She did ask me uh, during my visa interview and I offered her Amika's photo photocopy. Then the next not, not during the interview, I think the during the fingerprint and the document verification at that time they just scan your face and if someone is your dependent they'll scan a photocopy during the fingerprint or process itself Her fingerprint is done there is another section where you go and show them your document and they give you some post that which you'd carry it for the next day and uh, for interview for outside of embassy again there are people uh, more than early but it you just don't have to worry there will be a long queue but uh, they are very uh, precise about their timings exactly at that time 15 minutes 10 minutes before they'll announce you have to form a queue and then based upon that very uh, timely basis on slot basis they'll call the people inside so normally the embassy is like a lot of I mean, Delhi embassy was like you have to go through a lot of doors and, uh, before you, you know, get into the actual office yeah. so you have to um, uh, cross a few security checks it's better you don't carry anything any stuff apart from your file 
with you because otherwise there are locker systems but i found that most of the lockers were filled and there wasn't availability so i don't know what in that case what they do but uh, there it is like they, you have to pay some amount and you can keep it's better not to carry i knew this before because i had some uh, research around it so i knew that i don't have to carry anything it's just your file and you and then they'll allow through the security checks to go inside um only passport is normally required for the outer external securities but once you are inside then they'll just verify few other forms so once those forms are verified then they will uh, ask you to go for the interview which will be the another section or there will be four five windows where you have to again stand it in a queue or if there are desks they'll ask you to sit in the uh, desk and then one by one or uh, one or two people person can go in the queue and then um, give the interview you will be able to when you are into that waiting area you will be in observation mode okay what is happening around uh, other people and what answers they are giving which company are they telling i even heard the packages there were people uh, with packages from 6 to 100k or 100 plus k so even i was able to hear that their um, numbers on the packages or which client they are for or even i heard that okay do they have that client data and how are the consulates reacting if the client data is not voice and that audible room is in such a way that you will be able to at least recognize okay what is happening around to other people and then you go into your queue and yes i mean they ask you for the documents once that is very fair she'll start asking you those questions uh, normally starts okay which client you are traveling for or uh, what is the roles responsibilities and purpose i do remember this and then about your dependent those set of questions if they are traveling with you not with you uh, what are their dates and all are they traveling immediately and if If there, I think I know that uh, there were few uh, couples. If they have their spouse, they ask few questions to their spouse. So I remember that spouse questions. They were like happily interacting. Uh, and the same set of questions like how long you have been married and then uh, was it your love marriage even this question was asked and how did you meet even these questions i knew that okay these questions will be asked to your spouse when i googled out and those things but actually when i see in front of me oh, these questions are being asked uh, in, that is like informal uh, interview with your spouse so which is okay the only thing is that your client your all documentation client letter your purpose should be very crisp at that point which she decides upon so uh, quickly go back to your visa interview i remember you had like a pretty long interview right a lot of questions asked client letter asked so client uh, basically uh, you need a client letter uh, if you have client letter i i had observed that all of them were getting approved uh, and if you don't have client letter reject 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 so in front of me three to four candidates were rejected for the client letter and i was so scared i was like okay i am not going to go through this <laughs> but uh, that was my only chance and i had to give my uh, best but there is a trick for me i think there were two factors one was i told them i'm working for a banking client and they have uh, security reasons due to which they cannot share the client letter so that was one strong reason i put it forward very confidently when she was about to take that um, that basically consulates i find that there are young but most of them will be 40 plus so they are very experienced people you cannot fool them when you go for an uh, visa interview um, because i know that all the most of the windows they were less young around 30s and most of them were 40 plus so they were very experienced and this was one point second point was she asked me about last i think before making her decision her last question was what about your spouse why isn't he traveling with me and then we had a, a formalized that answer where we told that he already he has his own visa he has not traveled yet but he'll be uh, traveling and that's the reason he's uh, not included along with me as a dependent and she asked me about his location and then uh, then she approved it the very next moment she approved so for me i think there were the two reasons she knew that anyways i'm going to travel uh, because my husband already has a visa and he's traveling so even if this opportunity is taken down from her she is anyways going to travel uh, when you don't have a client letter you can show them the lca document labor uh, Yeah. i think that uh, document and then you can show the manage, manager letter but they are they were least interested in a manager letter lca at least for some percentage can go through but they were least interested in a 
management later even though i shared her that uh, with a strong will here is my management uh, sorry manager later too if you want to review but yeah. those were the two points i think uh, where i told her due to job related reasons if you don't have you have these backup options but uh, they should be convinced that okay it's a secured client you are traveling for and some security related it's just that they didn't share the client later too. these two tricks work so uh, what i was saying is right now is h1 b season so there are a lot of people like you know appearing for the interviews so how mm-hmm. would you advise on the preparation uh, because apart from the client letter they do ask you you know how what work you have in us what kind of skills you have for me i am working more into technical stuff i was less aware about how to share someone what my job profile is or what my work is and the answers which i had formalized when i had mock interviews with her with you sorry uh, so the answers which i had formalized were into more technical way and then you explained me okay this is not going to work because the, if the consulate doesn't understand the work you do they uh, the feedback would be negative so uh, all my technical answers you basically helped me to restructure or reframe in such a way that that will be into common layman terms which the consulate will understand and based upon that basically they make the decision you had told me and that i did experience that so if they do not understand the work or the job you do because i find that there were few uh, interviews in front of me where people were not louder enough so even that adds up she i told them uh, once or twice that be louder enough i am not able to hear you so you have to be loud confident and confident only comes when you speak in front of other people before going an interview um, and it's your life decision obviously you are even though whatever how much ever you are fluent with your english or you know your work well but it's a life decision and you are care at that moment especially if you have some future thoughts in your mind so it's better to have mock interviews and i, I remember that you are first interview you explain me through the process of the interview what questions will be and you explain the purpose behind every question which helped me to understand oh why why was this why is this question being asked and then you asked me to come up with my set of answers and post that or uh, during our second or third mock interview you kept on refining those um, i mean basically refactoring my all my words into some generic or business related terms where they will be understanding it more clearly so definitely that was very much helpful you were very patient i know uh, you were patient you were engaging and extremely professional i i find that uh, you know what in and out of the process is so you uh, having i mean having that communication with someone before going to an interview definitely uh, helps you to clear your thoughts i mean you're not confused you're not chaos at that point you know what your answers are in back of your mind and you have basically a pool of answers and then whenever a question is being thrown at you you know okay you need to pick this this particular answer for this question and i have to also keep the other information for next so having that interaction with you really helped me to create that pool of set of answers in back of my mind these are the questions so mm-hmm. uh, the first thing is that like you change your job right mm-hmm. uh, like unlike an l1 on h1 you are allowed to switch your employer so how does that work because i think a lot of people have this question that okay and i come there and i get a better opportunity how uh, uh, obviously my pay scale uh, when i came back from india it was below 100 and it goes uh, i mean an average salary here is around 150 so when you come here and switch obviously you're going to uh, get an average pay where which back in india experience now people have are getting on an average between 20k to 40k so they that is considered an average so here 100 play 100 plus to 150 to 60 is considered and a good pay scale 100 plus is definitely a good pay scale to survive basically on an average 100 to 160 is an average 160 is an added so i might be might not be knowing more the people here who come who study here know more about all those things but whatever i come to know from my friends might not be 100% correct though when you interact with other people you will come to know okay but i would not say that everything what i'm saying is 100% correct but when i i don't have many friends to here in us people have a lot many friends to get information from uh, with limited set of friends the information was there are tier one companies like google amazon apple which pay more than 160 uh, to 200 to 50 those are tier one companies tier two companies are like deutsche bank jp morgan chase or uh, then those are product based they have their own products but those lie into tier two companies and then there are three are consultancies like uh, tcs infosys which 
issues are or cognizant or all, all these are consultancies so when you come as a tier 3 consultant the average pay is i mean i would say it is below 100 or a little plus 10 than 100 so if you come back tier 2 for tier 2 companies it will be 100 plus definitely for like tushar he came from a tier 2 company so his pay was 100 plus which wasn't that enough but it is better to survive with one added member in your family and one child tier 1 is obviously you come through a giant organizations fan companies and uh, the recruitment process also when you switch for fan companies is normally they ask you more upon data structure algorithms which is the first requirement so if you're good at that if you land here you will be you'll have n number of opportunities here to switch i know that there is a recession right now but when i am looking for opportunities on linkedin there are many so what i believe in even during the recession times if you have right skill sets to meet that job requirement it is recession is not for you at least believe in that and then there are n number of opportunities apply and then you'll at least get selected out of 10 in one you'll get a call back and then you can continue and uh, for tier two companies it's the questions will be basic uh, small programs and then they'll continue with what your experience is and based upon that they'll ask you the questions and those are very formal questions indians are very expert in answering those set of questions for tier two companies which i switched into and then tier three is obviously tier three also has similar pattern like tier two but they are less depending upon the company though reluctant into getting more details they are okay but they just want uh, someone to work extra extra hard for extra hours extra on weekends so when you come through a tier three company uh, it's like all the time you have that pressure here because uh, you are fired from a company you have 60 days timeline to find another job here and uh, which now with different rules they have other options too with recession coming so there are other options but it is 60 days within that you have to find another job so you are all the time into that pressure and uh, they pressurize you to work on weekends and uh, even late nights and it's all about delivery so when you switch here to a local company my friends used to say that you will not be under that pressure because you were more on the business side not on the uh, development or um, the ground level thing so you need to know the business and you will be delegating your task to the other people which might be in india and most of them could be in india the other team so the life work-life balance is better when you work here for the local company uh in us and uh they follow eight to four very normal is it like you just go there apply for a job and if you uh, go, you can just switch your employer there's nothing yes. extra you have to do for h1 they'll be doing h1 transfer okay. so my process let's say uh it started in october uh and then i mean the interview process and then the approvals and then final hr interview it uh, took around one month but depending upon the company's requirement they have immediate requirement it could be a fast faster than this so for me and then the background process so here they have stringent background process especially if you're working for a banking domain for other uh, companies it could be less background verification than banks when banks i find because i have worked in india earlier for banks as well and i find that their uh the background process I mean, it was not, they didn't verify everything. It's just that you had some jobs and they'll just cross verify. They will not even reach out to you for anything. But here they have their different portals where you have to upload documents. They will go through every word of your resume, each date, each month of your resume and verify. I don't know what their verification process is, but somehow they verify even month wise that have you done this much month to month job in India. And if that somewhere they find any discrepancy uh, within your resume and what your documents are, at any time they can just stop the background process and uh, not proceed further. So it has happened multiple times because even my previous organization, uh, I used to hear from my manager, okay, uh, I'm hiring this person, but he couldn't meet the background verification and then he's not going to join us. So basically you apply the so for transfer. Uh, yes, I mean, once the background process is done, it depends upon the company, how much time they're going to take for me it took one month or normally for background process once that is done uh h1 transfer it takes if they are filing it premium it takes 15 minutes so it was like uh 15 days before they filed me they gave me the uh documentation i uh, just signed up those documents shared it to them and they did it in within 15 days the document was at my home uh so instead of giving it online here normally they deliver a physical document so once you have that physical document you're sure that your h1 
transfer is not done and then you can move ahead with the further process people even when they get an online intermission of your case has been approved even they move out move for the further process also mm. so but it's if they file it premium it's just 15 days and here uh, companies normally do not have in us most 90% 95% companies they don't have notice period like india back in india it is 2 months 3 months notice period here 15 days notice period that too it is your courtesy that you are ge- telling them 15 days ahead of time so that within those 15 days uh, you can do all your knowledge transfer and even if you want an earlier date than that you can switch within a week's time so that was so h1b transfer it just takes 15 days and post that if you are on notice period 15 days it could be lesser than one week also so within uh, within one month you can switch and get started with your new company so that is very short h1 transfer but if they are not filing in premium uh, it takes 5 to 6 months because my previous transfer which was done it was not done uh, on premium and then uh, it must be filed around march and then it came november so it takes 5 to 6 months if not premium so it's similar to h1b okay so back in india also this h1 transfer process could be done so if you switch a client so your h1 is uh, tied up to a specific client so if you are not going to travel for that specific client you have to file an h1b transfer from india itself it is called as h1 amendment you have to file an amendment petition and then for the new client and then you can based upon that you can travel here so that could be also done the initial process filing and everything is done and then you can travel and after here uh, you get the uh, final up- approval letter uh, for me it it was like 6 months so there is some process in detail which i don't know but even like in india your visa is stamped for what particular client and then you are trying uh, you are traveling for a different client you have to again file an h1b amendment uh, before traveling to that state or even with the location i think uh, you have to be around 40 miles of your location where your visa is stamped for that location uh, it is most stringent for l1 uh, because l1 uh, is that more area specific for h1 it is less uh, uh, stringent i would say because i have heard an experience where they come to your home uh, to check if you leave at that location so depends uh, i had he- even heard that experience that they do come to your house and then verify whether you leave or not it could be very rare case but it has happened with my close friends too so now uh, it is remote working so they might be little bit uh, reluctant for these two years but it could be before that then maybe in future you have to be aware about this so how is it how's the overall experience of working and living in us <laughs> definitely it's better than india i mean we struggle a lot in india uh, and i find it little bit e- at ease here most of the things uh, mm-hmm. it's just that initial settle down and once you spend 6 months here you are you know everything here and then you are just comfortable i mean settle down but even in back in india there are a lot more struggles and first struggle is traveling <laughs> which we right. don't have <laughs> right but how are you managing the kid and working you know she is in daycare as we had discussed at that time but uh, it's just that at that time i wasn't much aware about daycare and how it will be but uh, since we came here in fact within a month we started her daycare okay. so and uh, yes and then i inquired few of the daycare daycares and then uh, they basically share us a video uh, mm. i mean we can watch them on a video throughout the day so they start by i mean we, they have different options full time part time and then we have taken obviously due to office uh, 9 to 6 so yeah. they say they start by 7 to till 6 and then you can go and drop them at any time before 10 and take them out by uh, it's good it's like as a home they get here i mean uh, it's private obviously you spend a lot of money on it yeah, yeah. then uh, they offer food sleep they have their own beds there for especially for toddlers so they have afternoon two hours of sleep and then again their snacks at 4 o'clock and then we can bring them the basic struggle here when everyone comes is we are not aware about many rules and procedures basically here life in us is all about rules procedures if you follow that format your life goes very smooth so everything when it comes to professionally as well as personally if you set up a routine formalize everything then you will be able to but when we come back from india we are more into chaos mode and we don't know what we are doing so initially six months it goes to figure out the thing but when it comes to our personal life if i start you have you stay in hotel and for some companies you can even skip hotel and directly book a rent a house from india itself because we i know few colleagues who 
rented the house from India and then they took that hotel money from the company as their own just for the expenses. So some people do this and some people do stay in hotel for 15 days depending upon the company how much they offer. It could be 15 days or one month and within that time frame you have to find a rent house. So there are a few uh, websites where you can search and uh, find the rental house. Um, the rents basically here where I stay in North Carolina are from $1,500 to $2,000 uh, monthly rent for houses. So it depends upon what you prefer, one BHK, two BHK. And then uh, there is also a thing that here in North Carolina, for some most of the communities when we, we visited, Mika was very small and we used to go along with her. So they used to consider us as three people. So when you have a kid, they, sorry, to get a two BHK rent house. And they didn't allow us to go with one BHK. Oh, but people, that, also, that depends yes. on family size, they will tell you that you have to get this. Yes, but it is not in every state because I did hear from my friends uh, who are in California or New Jersey and uh, some in Philly. living in one BHK. Nobody can afford it. <laughs> yes. So that was their thing. I mean, we used to go with Mika, so every time so they asked us. But later on, some people we find here do stay in one BHK with the kids also. But it's just that when they um, opted for a rental house, they didn't inform okay we do have a child as well. they might have just considered two adults. That's it. So I mean, they never come and visit personally. Okay, there is one child living, so we can even some someone wants to do that, they can. But preferring for us, we were going to work from home, so that's why we were anyway is going to consider to BHK so that we'll have a proper office set up and so basically even like uh, package wise you should be in a good position if you are coming alone and there is some dependent upon you you should be minimum at least earning more than uh, 100k and on an average I would say plus or minus 100k if you are coming lesser than that then for one person with your spouse dependent and with your kid it's very difficult to manage because like too many expenses basically even though your rent is 1500 to 1600 there are other expenses apart from that the electricity bill goes around 120 um, k monthly and the water bill is extra so which goes around 100 k so you have around uh 200 to 250 extra expenses upon apart from whatever the rent you'll be paying the main challenge was another one is it depends upon city the where we live in uh, north carolina they wanted us the sorry there is no travel uh, basically there is no transportation here or uh, no bus commute there is but only in specific areas of main city as we live in little bit of town area where a lot of indians live we normally choose that area we uh, there are facebook groups which we join and then we ask them okay uh, which areas does the indians live and then i mean every basically every state here has that their own facebook community groups so before coming we can join that and ask questions you can ask anonymous questions you can also share your uh, profile there or you have to just join that group and then share whatever questions you have and people do help a lot of Indians do respond to your comments and reply and try to help genuinely so which I find uh, I mean one of the helpful resource the Facebook group I mean where, on very initial stage later on be your friends those are anyways going to help you out. so I hope you found the video useful if you have any more questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below you can also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at shachi.mal. And just like Komal, if you want to work one-to-one -one with me to prepare for your visa interview, then the link for that is in the description box. We can help you with reviewing your DS-160 form, structuring the answers, and also giving you practice through mock interviews. And like I mentioned before, make sure to download the free PDFs. These PDFs are going to help you with your interview prep. So the links for all of these things is in the description box. Signing off for now, but stay tuned, do subscribe. We have a lot more useful content coming up for the H-1B visa series, especially as shorts. So you will see that there will be a lot of YouTube shorts coming your way, sharing interview experiences and some more interview tips. So stay tuned for that. Signing off for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.